Hello and welcome to Monday Mentor, a Right Medicine series, the podcast that explores best practices in creating content for health professionals. Today's episode is designed to help you master the balance between your online presence and your well-being. I'm your host, Alex Housen, filling you in on the do's and don'ts of social media. And today's topic is especially useful for freelance medical writers and indeed anyone finding themselves overwhelmed by the demands of being present on social media. A common issue I've noticed among my clients and students is the constant struggle with social media. It's time-consuming, it's emotionally draining, and it's all too easy to get sucked into a vortex of negativity and spite. Maybe not from you, but certainly from others. The prevailing wisdom tells us that social media is a great marketing tool, particularly LinkedIn for freelance medical writers. And it's true, there's a lot of value in social media, but managing that without the drain is a constant challenge. So LinkedIn is the only social media platform I use. I've tried Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and they all have the same effect. My chest flutters, my heart races, and I can literally feel my nervous system switching into overdrive. So I choose to focus solely on LinkedIn, and I want to clarify why. First, I appreciate the professional conversations and connections with other writers, creators, strategists, designers, and professionals in the CME world who educate health professionals. These people fill me up, push me to think about new topics, and often force me to think about ideas beyond my own comfort zone. Second, I've been on LinkedIn since 2007, and I've come to understand the platform a little bit and how to make it work for me. Of course, it's constantly evolving and sometimes it feels a little tyrannical with its algorithms, but it remains a highly professional platform where medical writers gather, share and exchange ideas and resources, and critically, where my client market hangs out. And finally, LinkedIn is not a platform where people typically share their personal struggles in real time. Now, I'm a pretty private person. I process my personal life internally and with my friends and family. So LinkedIn isn't a place where I share personal matters, but insights and strategies that can help others. And with that background in mind, let's talk about how to manage your social media presence without losing your sanity. Let's start with strategy. I plan my content quarterly and then break it down into monthly, weekly, and daily posts. Paulina Rossi taught me this method, and I highly recommend her support if you need a deeper dive into your own content creation strategy. Next comes content batching. Once I have an idea of the content I want to focus on, I start blocking off my content calendar and drafting content. I use Taplio to draft and schedule content. I repurpose existing content from my blog, this podcast, and questions that pop up in Write CME Pro, the professional development membership for medical writers that I run. And I keep a running list of fresh ideas in Apple Notes. The key here is to have a system that captures your thoughts and ideas as they come up. And for me, Apple Notes is an excellent tool because it's always with me. It's on my phone. I can hit record when I'm out walking my dog and capture thoughts as they download. I consider this my download time, a phrase that is inspired by intuitive business coach Regina C. Meunier. Once you've created your content, you can schedule it on LinkedIn or set a reminder in your calendar. The important thing is to have a system that works for you. Now let's talk about time management. It's all too easy to get sucked into a rabbit hole of comments and posts that don't serve you. To avoid this, I use time blocking. I allocate a specific time at the beginning and the end of my day to respond to comments on my posts and to interact with others and their posts. I'm not completely rigid about this. Sometimes I'll pop into LinkedIn at other times in the day. But I don't have LinkedIn notifications on, so I'm not constantly getting an interruption of notifications of when people are posting on LinkedIn. I also recommend being really selective about what you respond to. 
If a post elicits a strong emotional response, like you feel some physical discomfort in your gut, your throat, your chest, step away. Step away from your phone or your computer. Do something that brings you back into your body, like walking, cleaning, any physical activity or movement. This will give your nervous system a chance to recalibrate, to settle, and to downregulate to a place where physically you feel calm again and ready to unpack your response to the post. When you're ready, write about your thoughts and responses to the post in a non-social media platform, like a journal. I find this practice helps me to figure out why I felt the way I did about the post, helps me clarify my own position, and often brings a fresh perspective or provides ideas for my own content. The aim is to have a balanced relationship with social media, where you're in control and not vice versa. And that is the end of today's micro episode. Hopefully you've gained some valuable insight on how to manage your social media presence. Remember, it's all about having a strategy, being organized, and crucially, taking care of your emotional well-being. Thanks for joining me today on Beat the Social Media Drain. Make sure you subscribe to Right Medicine Insider so you don't miss out on future episodes and expert insights on CME. I'll see you next time.